Welcome to the Gigaspace Zap Query API screencast. What we'd like to do is show data items written by multiple APIs read by multiple other APIs. The reason you'd like to do that is because you don't really want your data being limited by the model in which you store it. You know, if you use uh, JPA, you have a little bit of flexibility because you can think of it as an object model and a you know relational uh, set. But it was, uh, but you know if you do an object database, you're limited to thinking of objects as graphs. If you use a, a document store, you're used to thinking of properties and attributes. It's really a little bit limiting. Whereas with the Zap, with Zap's capabilities, what you can do is you can think of um, your data as messages or graphs or relations or you know what have you. So our example is an RSS uh, you know entry. We have you know, JPA annotations and space annotations, we have four simple attributes and they're all included down here. We've got columns and space properties. Um, nothing really spectacular here. The real magic takes place in our actual test. In our test, what we have is, first we do our configuration, we do some initialization of the space. We don't have to do this right here, but we're doing it just for completeness. Um, our first test actually writes an, a POJO, you know, it uses a builder um, because it's you know very flexible for building templates and things like that. Writes it into the space, then it does a query by example to make sure that our query actually works, um, and it does. We then have a miss just to verify what happens when we have a miss. Our next test does basically the same thing based on ID. There are one, two, three, four IDs right here, and we're reading that in. Um, this doesn't have to have a template, this just uses the ID and it can pull, you know, it's a little bit faster because of that. Um, our next test is the document API. Here we're actually reading this POJO with a document. We're so doing documents query by example, we're setting the title to first title. We set our model here, and then we do a read and we're getting a document, which is a set of properties and attributes. Um, we're validating that we're getting back the ID that we expect. Then we have a miss, you know, just to validate the miss. Here we're actually writing one into the space. We aren't using the, the RSS entry builder, we're using the document properties object, which is our builder for a map. Uh, and then we're just setting the properties and then saving the space document with those properties. We'll be using this a little bit later. Our next uh, example is the SQL query, which gives you a lot of, you know, it's, it's a lot like a SQL where clause, except you have a few specific capabilities, like, you know, you can quote an object's um, collected items, you know, or a document's collected items. Again, you can use a SQL query to pull back an object, as we're doing here, or a document. Uh, it includes parameter capabilities, so you can see we're setting the title here, and we're making sure that we get our miss, or our hit, rather. Our next test is a JDBC query. We're getting a, collect, a connection here. All it really needs is the driver and the URL. We're then executing a statement, again, parameterized. Uh, not this one's parameterized, this is actually just a wildcard, but we could do parameters. Um, and we're just making sure that we get both data items back because we, by this time we will have written our space document up here. So we're validating we're getting both of our items. Our next test is JPA. We set our JPA entity manager here. We then do a JPA find by ID, just does a search by the ID. We do a miss and then a hit. We validate that our hit comes back with the original data. Um, our next one, our next example here is, uh, you know, a query, a standard, um, you know, uh, JPA query. We have a parameter here. We're setting the parameter. We're making sure we get the one item back and it's the item we expect. Then we pull back the one that was written by the document. Again, multiple APIs being used to written to write, and one API being used to pull back. Then you know we have a miss just because we can. The last one is actually MapReduce, and this MapReduce is actually just a sum. All we're doing is we're doing a count of the objects in a given set. But this is actually very powerful. Because imagine uh, a very, very complex query. I'm, I'm just off the top of my head, imagine everything written between um, August 8th and August 11th by URI, or um, anything written by URI in the month of December that had more hits than anything in October. Um, 
you know, or that uh, has, you know, the color red in it. You, know, you can do some incredibly complex queries that, that are possible via SQL. I mean, you know, SQL is expressive enough to do it. But for one thing, SQL doing it in a distributed fashion is actually very expensive. Plus, it's not really easy. And the query actually kind of turns into a, a massive, you know, amount of text. Whereas here, what you're doing is you're building something here where you could actually get a set. You could build a, an example if you wanted to, and you're querying locally, so it's very fast. Or you can build a SQL query here and do an indexed search, or you can do really anything, or you could actually pull back every set here and walk through them individually if that's what you wanted to do, which is what an object database would normally do. Um, and that way, you're not actually crossing network nodes. You're doing everything locally. So there's no, you know, you're not talking about a network here. You're talking about CPU on that actual cluster node, which is usually, you know, available. Um, and if it's not, well, you can always distribute a little bit further and get more capabilities. You get horizontal scalability in your queries, which is normally pretty difficult to do. It's possible, but normally difficult. Now, it's nice for me to talk about all these, but it really would all be even nicer if I showed you. So here's the code actually running. So we have here, we're initializing everything. Now, and we're done. The longest test was right here, mostly because I had to initialize OpenJPA. It was a one-time hit. But you can see how everything actually worked according to our test, and we actually ran it live. Um, everything came back. So you can see here we have multiple APIs writing the data, and multiple APIs reading that same data. Any data, any API, however you want to think about it. We didn't show all of our capabilities because then we end up bogged down in, in explanations and we haven't even really talked at all about when you would want to use each one. But that's really kind of the power. You don't have to you know, limit yourself to a single API just when you have your data. You can write it how you need and read it how you need. Thank you very much.